Rocky Darren Newsom's going to join us, and we're going to talk grains, all markets, anything you want to know. Feel free to send any questions, anything you want to talk about, and we'll get to that. So um, it's 8 o'clock right now. Hopefully Darren's going to join us. Hey, Marco, thanks for joining. Let's see who else we get on here. Darren has joined. Darren, now in the lower right, you should see those two smiley faces. Click on those and say and we should be going live. There he comes. Good morning, Patrick. Ah, uh, yes, he is there. Excellent. What's going on, brother? All weather going on here as well. So, so life is good. How long? How long? Yeah, well, life is good. How long you been in Omaha? Let's see. Uh, I moved to Omaha. Oh, probably almost sixteen years ago. I think in January. Now uh, this okay. coming January. Okay. Yeah. So I've kind of lost track, but. Uh, <laughs> I, And um, for anyone, anyone who doesn't know Darren, do you want to introduce yourself and let people kind of know your background, where you've been, and what you've been up to, and what you're doing now? Sure. My entire life. Uh, started off way back when, just dumping trucks and running fertilizer. Uh, got my brokerage license. Yes, I have these live feeds. Aren't they, aren't they a joy? All right, looks like we lost Darren. Hopefully he pops back in real quick. Um, anyone else wants to jump in? They certainly can, but hopefully Darren gets back in. There. I don't know what happened. wasn't It wasn't my fault this time. I didn't press me. <laughs> Conversation, but um, we come back, and he is rejoined. So let's see if he pipes back in. Get you going. And there he is. Four, three, two, one. Blew up the conversation yesterday with someone, so it happens. All right, so let's go back. So let's go back to where um, how you got into this little shtick that we're in these days. Yeah. Again, life. Uh, I've been around agriculture. Grew up on a farm, and oh, you did. Uh, uh, yep, I grew up on a small farm down in southwest Kansas, uh, and so uh, eventually out on my own, uh, working with my son, basically analyzing what I like to analyze, talking about what I like to talk about, and ignoring everything else. Uh, <laughs> just uh, there's so much noise out there, so much nonsense that everybody. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so how do you get your information? How do you actually build your war chest of knowledge? On my own. Okay. Um, I uh, number one, you know, if I want to understand fundamentals of a market, and I don't care if I'm talking about gold, crude oil, corn, cattle, whatever, it might be something that doesn't start with C. Uh, <laughs> Most of it's mm -hmm. nonsense. Uh, most of it's just nonsense. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I look at it my way. Uh, I like to track trends, uh, which is just strictly price direction over time, because that tells me what the large money in the market. Sure. Comes out and, and people pretending like it's important. Yeah. yeah. You know, most of them just don't matter. Okay, so are are you less concerned about boots in the ground type of crop reports and things like that? Or are you are you basically you're just watching the markets and you see where the prices are going and basically that tells you all you need. You don't really need to know what's going on. You don't really need, you don't really necessarily need the code or something like that. Is that irrelevant to you because it's going to be priced in the market or how do you how do you how do you balance that? Okay. Newsom rule number five: it's the what, not the why. I Excellent. care less about that old that old uh, that old story about. one of them coming back yes yeah it's yeah they think yeah 
the, the crop tours sell well on Twitter because they can send back pictures of, oh, look at this really bad ear of corn. Oh, look at this yeah. great ear of corn. It's like, I've been kind of amused by that. I mean, I'm, I come from the south and I've been around a lot. Well, and again, it, it yeah, cars are out running. What are the future spreads doing? Yeah, what are the what are the, they believe? Right. Uh, like I said, uh, I, I don't have to pay attention to those anymore. And it's yeah, no, and, and I and I totally understand that. And you know, he explained to me and sold me. I was like, "What do you? Why are you trying to be a fun? Why are you trying to do fundamental analysis? You really think you're smarter than the people that are really running the world on this type of stuff? No, you're not. <laughs> you know, but they're going to tell you what they're doing by actually, if you look at technical analysis." You can figure out more easily that way. It's just supply and demand. You know, it's gonna yeah. it's gonna dictate everything you, you have to really know. And you studied economics, you understand that, right? And like, yeah, I understand that. So he saw he saw it's not really real anyway. So, but yeah, I, I, that's why I love your approach. I love you. You're simply looking at the charts. You're looking at what's going on, and that will tell you where we should be going to a certain extent, and that should tell you why we're really going there too. So, do you um are you a big believer in like the commitment of trade reports? Then you pull all that stuff out of there or. Where, where are you pulling your information from? I, I I look at the commitments to traders every week. Yeah. Yeah. And trend, which again is just price direction over time. I've always looked at it is set, and this is a huge that I've had with folks in the industry over the decades. Trend is set by the non-commercial side. They aren't trend followers. If they take away from their net short, all these sorts of things. It gives us a little background uh, uh, for the trend. But again, these are as of Tuesday, and I, and I, I use weekly yeah. charts as of Friday. So, I mean, they're, they're of limited value anyway. So, did, did, I, did I hear that right? Which, which component of the COT are you looking at? Are you looking at commercials or are you looking at the speculators then? Okay. Spreads. Okay. Okay. Sure, of course. That, yeah. Change that much. The, the, yeah. the side that changes is the spec side. So, you know, that that's the one I look at. And then for, for the commercial opinion, I just look at spreads. I look at basis. I look at other things. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that's interesting. That's, that's nice. It was there for the commercials to actually offset risk. They're just natural sellers anyway. They're they're hedgers. That's all they're going to be doing. So you got to expect them to be short. If they lift the short, you maybe if they lift the short by big by a big amount, then maybe you got to wonder, yeah, what's going on? That seems kind of odd. But all the same, that's their job. You know, <laughs> right. that's that, that's why they use futures is just to sell them anyway. So it it, it is kind of um, deceiving to kind of, kind of see. What I like, I like, Those futures what we're going on July, yeah. Beans move, you know, the, the entire soybean forward curve moved to an inverse. This we'll see that, uh, yeah. and that's again watch those spreads. Watch those. So what's that what's that us now that um, I mean, D thirty three half. You know, we get out to look, look at May three seventy. So what what are the spreads telling you right now as far as the conditions and what we're going to get in the next year? What what I what I like about the corn market is it's a very controlled, bullish supply and demand situation. Far more bullish. Than yeah. We have no idea what demand is going to be. So really, when we look at the new crop spreads at this point, it's it's a read on supplies, and right, right now. Telling us bushels probably aren't as large. interesting. Okay, um, what it, there's a couple, couple of arguments that I hear back and forth, and people talking about as far as particularly with corn goes is one the ethanol play. What do you think about the whole ethanol industry? Is that's the three legs of export if 
coffee, and that's also the smallest one. Um, yeah. Ethanol is what this whole, you know, if we go back to the demand market of 2006 through roughly 2010, it was built on ethanol. Yeah. Gas. Uh, yeah. and so gasoline demand is going to be down. Crude oil demand is going to be down. And what that probably means is we're going to continue to see the ethanol industry struggle. So that could cut into demand for corn from that sector. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting because what was it? We went back when uh, what phase one, the, the phase one myth was signed. Uh, the Treasury Department took away. The uh, manipulate and uh, the currency manipulator title from. Yeah. 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 It just looks like it's going to start drawing some interest, mo some investment money again. Yeah. And the real could break down to new lows. If that's the case, and if Brazil is able to produce this coming, you know, our, our winter, their summer, and they have a crop. sudden brazil's uh, soybeans and corn look a whole lot more attractive on the global stage than the u.s does yeah and i think that certainly be, certainly has to be a worry you know when you're watching all the shipments going back and forth moving around particularly china's i mean i i, I don't follow it too terribly closely i'm sure you probably follow my first i just thought a lot about koi's koi's corn go, go ahead had record shipments record ex exports from you know, six months or more. And yeah. it basically took their available supplies down to almost nothing. So their price, okay. the price of their commodities shot up, which okay. is just, you know, again, normal. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, but, you know, it's the... Here we say that yeah uh, ship for dough and so it's this the is... shipments that matter that's what yeah. brazil a b3 and i mean that thing has just been skyrocketing back in july in july it was trading on 48 bucks it's all the way up to 65 bucks so and it's, <laughs> i think it's at the high of the year while corn here in the u.s is just just stabilizing going nowhere the corn down to brazil has been skyrocketing the last two two three months so that um that tells me it's on that they can't get away with people without us on the U.S. for very long when I would think. Um, well, good. No, sorry. that's what's corn. Do you, uh, do you watch the other grains as well, or is you just primarily just the corn guy? Um, you know, so corn, so it means wheat, all the cattle's cotton, you know, just, just about. Interesting beans. Yeah. Yeah. Typical short supply spike rally that, that usually comes to an end with the combine. It certainly looks like it could be the case again this time around. And wheat really just kind of hanging in there at this point. Uh, we're getting we're moving into uh, planting season, or we're moving through planting season for the winter. Yeah. What about the meats? Any thoughts on that? Hogs are fascinating in that, you know, we continue to see the October run away uh, from the deferred contracts. So, again, similar to soybeans, what we have is, a, is we have a very strong supply and demand situation going on right now. Short term, we got a lot of demand up front. And, you know, what we've seen in like the hogs and pigs report. Yeah. Cattle market looked to be getting a little bit tired in here. I'm still looking for them to roll over. Uh, the la you know, in the last few days, we've seen you know them try to fall down and move up. So there's still plenty of support coming from the cash side in the. You can even cattle as well. I'm to be free. And uh, same thing. I mean, the live cattle index in Brazil be three back. So that's been a skyrocketing <laughs> market as well too. It's got to make our stuff look awfully appealing. It, it does. Well, you know, my, my, only, my only question is what's going to happen, you know, when the real breaks down, uh, and I think it will, and when the U.S. dollar moves. Cattle or? 
uh, the long term dollar chart looks like it's moving oh, into, a, a, oh, yeah. into an uptrend, which is going to affect. You know. Oh, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I, I think I'm, it's kind of frustrating. We haven't gotten that much support into the commodities with the weaker dollar we've had over the last few months, really, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, any, anything else? Any of the markets out there you're looking at right now? Those are the key ones. You know, also keeping an eye on the S&P 500 uh, based on the old. Right. Where the, uh, where the S&P closed at in uh, July. Uh, so that sets us up for August, September and October. Right now, we're just kind of muddling through, uh, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, so you get keeping an eye on the stock markets, keeping an eye, you know, just trying to keep it. That kind of covers it. What else? Um, tell me about tell me about your. I mean, you've got a you have a a service you offer, right? Like a like a market research service of some sort, correct? You want to talk about correct. that a little bit? Yeah, and absolutely. Who, uh, who, who, and who and who's kind of like your target audience? Who are you selling this to? Are you selling it to producers? Are you selling it to commercials? Are you selling it to traders? Yes, all the above. Um, <laughs> Let's what, not what limit got, that. Yeah, what we what we've got going here is we you know, it's, it's a it's a website uh, that, that folks can subscribe to. Uh, most of our subscribers are producers. Uh, we offer a commentary package where I just have my daily commentary, my weekly column, report commentary for the reports that I view as important, and I don't really pay much attention to the rest. The, uh, we have the analytical package where I look at, you know, all the different markets that we've been talking about this morning, usually with weekly charts, but I also look at the seasonal studies, uh, price distribution studies. I look at uh, basis and all of these things. Uh, so I have that. Uh, and then what we, 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 we're also targeting, you know, with that, we're looking at traders as well. We've got some interest from traders and trading companies, brokerage companies uh, to kind of provide them, you know, if they don't have in-house uh, uh and an in-house analysis department, sure. mm -hmm. you know, we provide that for them. So uh, we've been doing that. We've been providing folks with some newsletter commentary, uh, again, producers up and down the scale, uh, merchandisers, traders, just kind of a, just kind of an industry wide, uh, not just agriculture, but we're, we've moved into the financial markets as well. Cause you know, there's yeah. a lot of things going on outside of agriculture. Now, did I hear that right? Will you do like proprietary research with people then? So if like, like if a research, if, if a prospect or, or a company is only cons interested in Iowa hogs or something like that, you, can you guys break that out? Or can you guys do very precise type of targeted research or you just put out a general research paper? I, I you know, I, I can, I can target it some, but, but what I'm not going to do is break away from, you know, the way I like to look at markets and, sure. you know, so there's a, there's a lot of folks, you know, if someone's just interested in the Iowa hog price, there's a, there's a lot of folks out there who have a better understanding. Okay. Uh, or if we have a customer who says, "Yeah, point that," I can look at that for them, uh, or hog market or whatever it might be, and, and do some very generalized uh, research for them. So uh, we can yep. we can we can usually take care of uh, whatever questions they have, and if there is something that we don't do, certainly happy to find someone who can help them with it. Uh, how, how closely do you look at international commodity markets? And um, obviously, obviously, you, you follow the, the CME stuff, Skyboard trade stuff very closely. But do you do you look at the commodity markets at trading in in Europe and in China and other places as well? I you know I don't track them probably as closely as I should. I do try to keep uh, I do try to keep an eye on them mm -hmm. uh, because that's where you can start to see differences, like the price differences as you were talking about between. Uh, say the Brazilian products and the U S products. Uh, there, I don't have a, you know, sometimes there's not a lot of confidence as not as there's not as much confidence in those markets because they're not quite as liquid uh, yeah. as, as what we see here in the United States. And so if we want a better view of say the global market, we can look at because, you know, it's the U S markets that are used globally for hedging purposes. And so that's, that's why I generally yeah. focus on the U S markets because they do have, they do cover, uh, the global uh, the global markets as well. I do look at the prices of uh, of other markets around the world because it does give us a good idea of you know how ours is sitting uh, on the okay. global, on on the on the export game. 
Okay, so any, anything you're looking for in the markets today? Today, 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 today. Actually, today. Anything you're going to expect to see? Quiet. Any, any, quiet today? I, what I think it's going to be quiet. If, if anything, right. we're going to see some hedge pressure because weather's pretty clear. So continue yeah. to see some harvest hedge pressure. There's no reason to hold soybeans. So I think you got some soybeans being moved uh, as far as producers are making some sales. So there's really, okay. you know, there's no reason for them to hold that. Then, of course, we've got the quarterly stocks. That'll be about 10 seconds worth of interest on Wednesday. And then we hit the end of the month. Uh, All right. So now looking out for the next week, what, what give me give me three contracts, three contracts, not products, not markets, but three contracts to look at for the next week. I like these corn. Okay. Uh, particularly if we can break this thing down a little bit. Uh, specifically, what I'm really looking at doing is rolling some uh, some de- he- some short dece hedges out to the march. So I guess instead of just dece corn, it would actually be the dece march spread. I'm looking okay. at getting some of that in place because because uh, I think we're going to get to a point where it's not going to be a great carry, but it's going to be some carry. And we're going to be able to take advantage of that because corn basis – uh, tends to peak in the third week of, of, uh, of February. So I think it's going to give us an opportunity. Uh, I also think uh, that I'm, I'm looking for another selling opportunity, say, in the D-Slive cattle. I want to see it break down uh, a little bit in here. I think it's got some room to move lower if it does. So I'm going to be keeping a close eye on that. And yeah, I know we've seen gold and silver rally. Uh, yep. I would be a seller of pick, pick your cho- you know, take your choice. I'd be a seller of either of those if it uh, bumps up again today into tomorrow uh, to close out the month as we. Interesting. Yeah. 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 Investment money. So now if we see this rollover from investment money coming into commodities versus, say, into the dollar, yeah. then it's going to come back out of gold and silver, possibly crude oil as well. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I kind of, I kind of, I was kind of wondering if you're gonna, if you're gonna pop in gold when you were talking stronger dollars. So I was, I was uh, glad you kind of threw that out there. So, well, that's good. Well, hey, Darren, this has been a good talk. I've appreciated. Anything else you want to do? Uh, get off your chest, talk about real quick. <laughs> no, I think we've covered most of it, Patrick. I really appreciate you having me on. Hey, I appreciate it, man. This has been a great talk. You went really smooth, went really well, and um. Hopefully we'll talk again sometime. If anyone else wants to get online and talk sometime, talk to Darren. Darren, how can they reach out to you? Your handle is at Darren Newsom. Obviously, it's up there in the upper left-hand corner. Yep. At get Darren a hold Newsom of them. on Twitter, yeah, and, right? Yeah. Do, do you offer uh, free trials to your newsletter or anything like that? Okay. Yeah. Go to so DarrenNewsom.com, uh, and you can sign up for a seven-day free trial, see everything that we do. Uh, there you go. And I'm always available for uh, phone, Twitter, email uh, when you have questions. Awesome. All right, all right, I'm going to sign off then. Thanks a lot, Darren. We will talk in some other time. Have a good day. All right, you too, Patrick. Thanks so much. Cheers. Bye.